Well, it's Pac-12 basketball once again as we welcome you back on the Palouse to Beasley Coliseum and Pullman, Washington as the Washington State University Cougars getting set to take on the Utah Utes as we get ready for Pac-12 women's basketball on a Sunday on what is the next to last weekend of conference play before we get ready for the Pac-12 conference tournament. Well, hi again, everybody, and a very pleasant good afternoon to you all as we do get ready for the Washington State University Cougars and the Utah Utes. This game important for both teams, but especially for Washington State, because as you take a look at the standings, the Cougars now sitting 7-10 and in the conference behind USC, Colorado, and Oregon State, but not so far behind that if things break their way, they could leapfrog those teams. The Cougars not only trying to improve their seeding for the upcoming Pac-12 tournament, but of course trying to improve their resume to try and get into the NCAA tournament for the first time since the early 1990s. Now what about the last time that these two teams met? It was in Salt Lake City, and you have to go all the way back to January the 1st. The Cougars jumped out to a six-point halftime lead as they would control things most of the way through the first half, and of course Charlize Ledger-Walker, she's been great all season long, whether it's driving to the basket or shooting the three, she is somebody that's averaging nearly 20 points per game, and she was able to get that. But she also had complimentary help. How about Ula Matuga? She finished with 16 points in the win. The Cougars also got 16 from Bella Murakatate and ended up taking a lead, but then Utah would start to make their way back. The Cougars, though, just enough for Charlize Ledger Walker, a timely three. Ended up up by double digits in the third quarter. And then Utah would ultimately make their run. And all of a sudden, the Utes were coming back. But the Cougs had just enough in the fourth quarter to fend off Utah. Near final score all the way back on the 1st of January. A 79-74 Cougar victory. And one of their better offensive performances of the season. Speaking of Charlize Ledger Walker, well, what a job she has done. Seven times named Pac-12 Freshman of the Week. She's averaged almost 20 points per game. That's ahead of the likes of All-Americans Ari McDonald and Chris Osborne. And is now trying to become the first freshman in conference history to lead the conference in scoring. As again, she's up to around 19 and a half points per game. Meanwhile, for Utah, Brenna Maxwell, their main point getter, as she comes into this one averaging just over 13 points per game and went above that on Friday against the Huskies. Maxwell finished with 16 for Utah. Utah and Washington State, again, with Brenna Maxwell having her good day. They are hoping that she can have a good day along with some of the other underclassmen for the Utes, like Kemri Martin and Kennedy McQuain. But is it enough to take down a Washington State team who's trying to turn things around and stop a four-game losing streak for the first time this season. It's the Cougs, it's the Utes, and it's next. Pac-12 women's basketball on the Palouse, and it's here on Pac-12+. Plus. So the Cougars and the Utes to do battle here on this Sunday. Very important game for both teams, but maybe even more so with the postseason aspirations for the Cougars and just a couple of weeks ago, a team that was nine and six and looking really good for the postseason still probably has everything in front of them at 9 and 10, especially with the strength of this conference, but Lynn Roberts in her sixth season as head coach of the Utah Utes, waving across the way to Cami Etheridge, who is the head coach for the Washington State University Cougars. Michael Price, our referee, going to step in between the post, Pendande and Murakatete. The ball is in the air. Washington State will win the tip, and we get this one underway from Pullman, Washington this afternoon. Ula Matuga will pass off to Ioana Tedder, back out to the top of the key to Charlize Ledger-Walker as Utah matched up man-to-man -man here in the early going. A screen from Bella to Charlize. She's going to take it all the way to the rim, puts it up a little too strong. Rebound fought for. Bella's got it. Will she be tied up? The answer is yes. And since the Cougars had the opening tip, it will be ball to the Utah Utes. So again, Utah with it as they will get a chance now for their first offensive possession as they're going to bring it across the timeline and into four court. Around the right side of the horn, almost losing it, but then picking it up will be Martin back out to the top of the key. It will go to Becker. Becker comes near side to Maxwell. Tedder on her and the man-to-man -man defense being used by Washington State. Inside to Pendande, and we're going to have a blocking foul called on Bella Murakatate. And that'll be the first foul whistled in this one. It comes 42 seconds in. Bella thought she... 
Had pretty good possession, but I think she was moving just a little bit. I think it's a good call for Michael Price. It's bang, bang, usually on block charge, but I think Michael had that one scoped out. Maxwell has it in the corner. Is going to take it out and then cross court over to the far side to Torres. She's going to stop at the right elbow, give it down to this time a post player. pendante has got it, tried to get around Bell, and she's going to put it up and in. So Lella Pendande has got the first two for Utah, and it's a 2 nothing Ute lead. As we're a little over a minute into the contest, Tedder, a three on that end, is going to miss as it rims off, and the rebound comes down to Martin. She'll come up the sideline, wait for the rest, and set up in the half court. Now has it open from the foul line, puts it up from 16, but it spins off, and an offensive rebound down to Torres. They try and fire it inside, but Bella got around and was able to deflect the pass over to Ula Matuga. Now the pass deep down court to Bella, who will collect and lay it up and in. So the Cougs get a couple in transition, and it's now 2-2 Washington State in Utah. Just over a minute and a half in. Utah trying to save it in. Their pass is going to be deflected. Who's going to go get it? Crystal Ledger-Walker had a piece. Now Charlize Ledger-Walker goes to get it. Gives it right back to Crystal. She's going to head to the hoop. Puts that one up. That one rims off no good. And Utah comes down with the rebound. Boy, bodies hitting the court and going after But they can't finish. So they had everything but the finish this time. Now Becker on the baseline for Utah. Sends it out for a three. It's all the way. And that one good for Martin. So Kimberly Martin with a three for Utah, and they're on top five to two, just over two minutes here into the opening period. Tedder at the left wing, takes it out to the top, finds Ula Motuga, who then finds a wide open Bella Murakatate for another layup. And if you were with us on the radio side of the pregame, getting the post presence going is what Cammy Etheridge had to say as far as getting things going for Washington State. And there's two for Bella. She's got all four of the Cougar points. It's now five to four. Two and a half minutes gone here, opening quarter. That ball in between the hands of a Utah Ute, but Becker's got enough time to scoop it up before it heads out of bounds. And Pendande will look inside. Now we'll pass to the far side, but a lot of traffic in there, and Tedder got a hand on it. Crystal Ledger Walker getting it back up court to Tedder. Finds Charlize into the corner to Tedder once more. Now it's Ula Motuga faking the tree, driving strong in the basket to lay it up and in. So the Cougars who wanted to get their post going, have about six paint points from their two posts, Bella and Ula, and they take their first lead of the afternoon. It's 6-5 with 6.49 left to play in the opening period. Up top to Pindande, she looks and trying to find some space with Maxwell, but the Cougars are gonna turn them over. Four on three for Washington State. Charlize Ledger Walker lines up the three. Got it! A three in transition and a timeout by Lynn Roberts. Well, it was the post getting things started for Washington State. A couple of layups for Bella Murakatate. Meanwhile, the Cougars wrap it up with a three by Charlize and have a 9 5 lead as the Utes call timeout. We'll step aside from Pullman. 6.34 left to play opening period. Washington State 9, Utah 5. Washington State on a 7-0 run. Ula Motuga to Bella Maricatate for a couple of points as the post got things going early. Bella scored only a point yesterday. He's got four points on two for two shooting. Ula Motuga only seven points yesterday. So again, the Cougars concentrating on trying to get their posts active and they have been early on. And then the Charlies three causing the timeout from Utah. Now some pressure out at the top by Washington State. And a ball thrown away, and the Utah Utes will turn it over. And for Utah, that's already five turnovers in the first three minutes and 41 seconds of this thing. So 9-5 Washington State as they've gotten the lead back. And now it will be Charlize Ledger Walker looking inside. Gives it to Ula Motuga right back out to Charlize. She's got it between the circles, takes it inside of the free throw line, puts it up from 15, won't go, but she is bumped from behind, and the foul will be called on Nia Becker. Well, Becker picks up her first, and Charlize Ledger-Walker heads to the free throw line. Again, the freshman out of New Zealand having such a good season. 19 and a half points per game, the Pac-12's leading scorer. Not only that, but the defense that she has brought and just some calm and poise when she's on the court, uncanny for a freshman. And also, the thing that she has been able to do is just kind of 
see that when the pressure gets bigger, she rises to it, and that's a difficult thing for a freshman in this conference. 9-0 run for the Cougars, and they now lead it 11-5. Pass comes out to the top of the key. Substitution was in, and that's McFarland. She's got it. Looking down on the baseline. Instead, we'll bring it back out to the three-point arc and hand off to Martin. Martin drives into the lane, runs into the wall. That is Bella Katate. The ball is loose and then picked up on the sideline by Crystal Ledger Walker, who hit the deck one more time. A couple of fancy dribbles by Bella. Gets it to Charlize. Into the lane, draws the foul, and a chance for two. We well, take a look at that play from start to finish from the Cougars picking it up. First, Crystal Ledger Walker hitting the deck to get it. Finding Bella in transition, who has to take a dribble or two. And then she puts it in the playmaker's hand, Charlize Ledger Walker. Charlize puts up the first free throw this trip, and it's up and good. So already six first quarter points for the freshman. And it's now 12-5 Washington State. That free throw's up and good as well, so make it a 13-5 Cougar lead. And now a 11-0 run for Washington State in this one. Five and a half left to play, opening period. Happy to have you with us from the Palouse in Beasley Coliseum in Pullman, Washington. Cougars in the middle game of their three-game homestand to wrap up the regular season as they'll welcome the Huskies next week. Utah's got it. Becker drives into the paint, tries to pass out, but before she does, steps on the baseline, and that is already turnover number six for the Utah Utes. Utah, of course, under man. Drew Gilton out for the season with an injury. That's an important ball handler, an important leader for this team. A young lady had missed only one game over the course of her career due to an injury before the season-ending injury. Tedder for three, top of the key. Bingo! That's a three for Johanna Tedder. So she's got a triple. Crystal Ledger Walker still harassing in backcourt, but the Cougs now with a 14-0 run. And it's a 16-5 lead with four and three-quarter minutes left to play in the opening stanza. Now Martin, oh, a nice little fake of the eyes to look like she was going to shoot it, and then passing to Peyton McFarland for the deuce. So that stops the big 14-0 run, and it's now 16-7 Washington State. Charlize Ledger Walker for three. That's going to go off the back of the rim, no good. There for the rebound comes Torres. Well, Martin to bring it up court, loses it momentarily, gathers it back, and then brings it back out beyond the arc to Maxwell. She's going to drive, puts up the shot in traffic, it rims off, no good. Long rebound down to Becker and gets it to Torres, who drives into the paint. She tries to get it to McFarland, ball is loose. Ula's got it, tried to pass it to a teammate, jumping in there, Becker, and again, the amount of bodies to the court after loose balls is something that is showing the importance of this game for both teams. Cougars have come out with that importance as again, they want to get back to the postseason. Utah, obviously at 5-14, and 14, tough for that to be a case with only a couple of games left, but you can see the desire that they're playing with here late in the season as well as they were on the court battling to tie that one up. Nan Curvis has come in for the Cougs. She's got it out to Crystal Ledger Walker who fires up a three, and that one is good. Three threes in the opening period for Washington State. And their lead is a dozen. It's now 19 to 7. Now with it, McFarland comes over to the left-hand side and hands to Becker. Becker into the paint. Strong move. Can't get it to go, though. And the rebound. Now Becker had it, but just did not able to tiptoe the baseline. Good effort from her to try and get the ball back for Utah. But just with the shoe on the baseline with that, the ball over to Washington State. 17-2 run over the last 4-15 as the Cougars fell behind early, 5-2, but it's been Washington State that has got their offense cranked up. Now they're 6 out of 10. Man, Curvis to Ula. By the way, 6 uh, field goals, 3 of them, 3s now. Charlize on the baseline against Becker, looking to pass off. Now gets it in low to Nan Curvis. She'll pass back out beyond the arc. Crystal Ledger Walker will drive in, try to bounce it to Nan Curvis. And now Crystal saying to herself, I should just put it up. She said, that's my bad. I should just uh, attack the basket there. So a turnover for the Cougs. They've had a total of two now, but seven early for Utah. Meanwhile, Martin going coast to coast and... Nobody stopping ball, and she'll dump in two more for Utah. 19-9 now as it was a long down court pass, and then a nice little bounce to Martin to put it up and in in transition, kind of catching the Cougars napping there. 
All right, and Kervis from the foul line puts that one up. It's going to rim off, and then they're going to call Ula over the back. So she'll pick up her first, the second against Washington State. Yeah, and the Cougs, two out of three. This is the second of three straight here at home. Utah home next Sunday against their rivals, the Colorado Buffaloes. Colorado trying to make a case for the postseason. They got a big one with the Huskies today over in Seattle. Over at the right wing, Martin comes near side to Becker at the three-point arc. Screen coming. Charlie's got around that. Becker now looking to dish as she's terminated her dribble. But we'll get it now this time to Torres. Goes inside to McFarland. Spins. Finds now a teammate before kicking out to Becker for the open three. But that one hits the front of the rim and falls away. Cougs in transition again looking. Crystal Ledger Walker gives to Motuga. She's going to line up the three. Got it. Ooh, Motuga with the three. The fourth Cougar to hit a triple in the opening period. And they're up 22 to nine on Utah. Becker to McFarland, head of the key. The handoff, and the Queen's got it. She goes lengthening through the paint and puts it up and in. So the freshman out of Utah, Kennedy McQueen with her first two points. And it's 22 to 11 now. Charlize Ledger Walker gives to Motuga. She's gonna take it strong. That one blocked, but they're on the weak side as Emma Nan Curvis picking up the loose change to put it up and in. So the sophomore from Australia has her first two, and it's now a 24-11 Cougar lead with a minute 15 left to play in the opening chance. Of. Now Martin with it. McFarland coming over for the screen. Now she uses it, puts one up just inside the arc from about 17. It's off the mark, and there to get it will be Nan Curvis. Crystal Ledger Walker quickly into front court, made a little motion to her sister Charlize to fill lane in that unspoken communication between the two. Put Charlize into another gear and then the bounce pass delivered to her. Doesn't finish, but does draw a foul. It is the second on McFarland, as that'll be the third against Utah, and it's going to send Charlize Ledger Walker to the free throw line. But in transition, just kind of a nod from one sister to the other, maybe just the slightest of a hand motion, saying, I'm looking for you, and Charlize hit another gear and filled the lane. Now she puts that one up and in, so now eight points in a good pass that time from sister to sister. And the New Zealand connection working for two free throws, and Charlize will cash in both of them. Well, nine first quarter points for Charlize Ledger Walker. Six of them at the free throw line, and it's 26 to 11, and she'll get the final minute of the opening period off, or at least she's going to take a break for the time being. McQueen with the top of the key for Utah, steps back, puts up the three, and that one's good for Kennedy McQueen. Pretty little three-point shot, and it's now 26-14. Cougs by a dozen. 40 seconds and counting left to play, opening period from Pullman. As Tedder gives to Sorver, she came in for Shirley's. Sorver over to the right wing to Tedder, goes inside the Nan Curvis, now finds Sorver. Back out to Crystal Ledger Walker, looking for Sorver. She's looking to be the fifth Cougar to hit a three. Was that touch going up? I don't think it was. It's just going to be an air ball, and it's going to be Utah basketball. So the Utes can use the final possession here. The Cougs have built themselves a 12-point lead, but a chance for Utah to try and cut into that a little bit. But the Cougars are going to make it harder for them to bring it up court with some full court pressure. Ball will come in to Maxwell, who comes back to retrieve it. And now Torres will start her way up court as they're denying the ball this time to Martin. And they finally float a pass to her. She's working against Crystal Ledger Walker, has it on the far edge. Gives it to McQueen, overcomes the screen. McQueen in the lane against Nan Curlis. Nice little up and under move. Won't go and the rebound down to Ula Mutuga. And she's going to let one go from half four. Off the backboard, no good. And the first 10 minutes in Pullman are in the books. Well, Utah took an early lead. Then a big 17-2 run for Washington State. And they've opened up a 12-point lead at the end of 10 minutes. Here from Beasley, it's Washington State 26. Utah 14, and we'll be back with the second quarter after we take time out. The former coach, George Ravley, there you see his cardboard cutout. He's one of the cardboard cutouts in the fans. That's next to a young Clay Thompson on the other side, as we're showing on the screen. The Ravley, and of course, coaching for the Cougs into the early 1980s, took the Cougars to one of their NCAA tournament appearances with Craig Elo. 
and the rest of the crew. There's a shot put up, won't go. Foul going to be called on Ula Motuga, so an early second period oh, foul, and a second foul on Motuga. But Raveling taking the Cougars to the NCAA tournament back in what was 1983. Also, um, appearance for the Cougars in the 80s in 1980. His banner now hanging at Beasley Coliseum after that ceremony took place last basketball season. And he still owns one of the most important documents in U.S. history, the notes to Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Very impressive. All right, one out of two at the line for Kemri Martin. So she now has six points for Utah. The Utes get the first point of the second quarter, and it's a 26-15 Washington State lead. Utah now in a 2-3 zone on defense. Pass goes inside to Ulu, the kick out to Sarver. Now it'll be Tedder with it. Back out top it comes, and over to the right side to Sarver. Can the Cougars attack this zone? They had some problems with that against the Colorado Buffaloes on Friday night. Pass inside the Matuga, shot won't go, but a foul will be whistled as they're gonna get Kelsey Reese with the foul. Freshman out of South Australia. Bring some length in there at 6-5, but Ula was able to draw the foul and head to the free throw line. Five early points for Ula. Again, she's had some games where she's put up a number of points for the Cougars. Friday was not one of them. You're going to get the effort from Ula every game, and she's usually going to pile up some pretty good numbers on the rebounding side of things. And if she can be an offensive force along with Shirley Sledger Walker and others, then... That's what makes this team capable of playing with just about anybody. And certainly has shown that on a couple of occasions this season, beating the Arizona Wildcats and the UCLA Bruins. Ooh, a little quick break. In part, just to give her one, and the other in part, probably because of two early fouls, a sheer levy now checks in for the Cougs. Martin to Reese. Wants the other post player to report so she can take it to the wing. Now looking for Maxwell, doesn't get it to her. Now we'll fire it into the lane. With it there is McQueen. She takes it out to the three-point arc and hands off to Maxwell. Sarver's playing the tough defense on her. Trying to find some space and can't. So Reese now comes into the lane, working against Bella. Loses control, and it's going to be a travel whistle. A lot of contact in there that they let him go and play through. And then Reese, the unfortunate recipient of a travel call at the end of it, to climb out of that mess. All right, the Cougars with it and bringing it into four court, 28-15. Tedder tries to bounce it to Levy. It's off her knee and picked up by Utah. They've got numbers four on two. They kick it out for a three from Maxwell in transition, and that one good. So the turnover leading to three points for Brenna Maxwell, and that's her first three, and that's exactly what Utah needs to try and spark them in the second quarter. She was quiet in that opening period because of the way the Cougars were draped all over her. Again, the zone from Utah. A little bit of a lack of motion from the Cougars. Charlize is going to try and bail him out, and the bank's going to help as well. Well, we'll take it. Second three is that one banks home for Charlize, and she's now up to a dozen, and it's 31-18. to 18. Martin driving on Sarver. Puts up the shot, got it around her, and put it up and in. So Martin with eight first half points, and it's now 31-20. to 20. Levy takes it to Sarver at the right wing. She'll float a pass to Charlize Ledger Walker. Goes inside to Bella down the left side of the lane, attacking. That shot won't go. Ball is loose. Bella gets her own rebound. Clears it back out to Tedder and a fresh 20 for Washington State. And they get this ball moving against this zone and find some open looks. Sometimes a little stagnant and don't move the ball as much as they should against the zone in this offense. Charlize Ledger Walker bounces it to Shear. She'll put up the deep three. It's off the mark. No good. Down with the rebound, though, is Utah. The Utes back across the timeline. McQueen lining up a three from the corner off the mark. No good. There for the rebound. Reese, that one won't go from inside, but gets her own rebound. And that one also won't fall. Rebound to Levy, and the Cougars bring it the other way with an 11-point advantage. Levy at the top, gets it away from a Utah defender. Now goes in the lane to lay it up, but misses in traffic. Balou Shear gets to it, and on her belly gets the pass off to Tedder. Now Tedder launching up the three. It's off the iron, no good. And the rebound coming down this time to the Utes. 
So neither team with a whole lot here in the early stages of this third quarter. They did get a banked in three to Washington State. Also a three from Maxwell on the Utah side of things. Martin's going to put up a mid-range jumper that will put the rim and come off from about 16, 17 feet away. The rebound down to Grace Orr. Substitutions on both sides waiting to come in at the next dead balls. We're down to 6.20 and counting before halftime. And a 31-20 Washington State lead. Levy at the top of the key over to Tedder. She'll direct traffic with the point. Gives it inside to Charlize Ledger Walker. They tried to tie her up, but instead, it's going to end up out of bounds off the leg of Charlize. She tried to rip it away from the Utah player and then ultimately had it go off her leg and out of bounds. Michaela Jones, who had a couple of big threes for the Cougars on Friday, will check in. Also, Ula Motuga back in for the Cougs. Meanwhile, Pendande and McFarlane back in for the Utes. Actually, make it Becker and McFarlane. All right, now it's Maxwell top of the key off a screen, looking to find McFarlane. She gets it low, puts up a shot in traffic, won't go. And the rebound comes down to Washington State. 31-20 so far. Again, shooting percentage is declining just a bit here in the second quarter, but still moving at a pretty good clip as the pass comes off to Crystal Ledger Walker. And in the corner, Charlize Ledger Walker out top. Michaela Jones fakes the three, gives it to Sorber. She tried to go inside with it, but the ball deflected away and taken away. Now into forecourt will come the Utes as Ted are going to come in at the next dead ball for Washington State. Becker out to the top of the key with a handoff this time. And then over it goes to Becker one more time at the right wing. Becker going to penetrate in against Charlize Ledger Walker but finds no room to maneuver. McQueen will take over. Chris Ledger Walker trying to get it from her and they're going to whistle a reach in foul. Well, the only bad thing about that is, one, McQueen was not in any shape to score from that spot and the shot clock had wound all the way down to four. But you also like the aggressive defense that Crystal Ledger Walker brings. You don't really want to rein that in too much because of what she can bring on that side of the court for you. McQueen looking to try and get it to Maxwell. Tedder is draped on her after coming back into the game. Maxwell trying to get around her with the screen, but can't. Now we'll pick up the ball and pass off. Shot clock down to five as they get it inside to McFarlane, and she's going to be able to find an alleyway to the hoop and lay it up and in. Past the midway point of the second, it's 31-22 now. Washington State by nine. Again, a little stagnant here. The Cougs 0 for their last four as they try and go inside to Ulu, but McFarland's going to be in some foul trouble. She's going to pick up her third personal. So that means probably another post player coming in for her after the timeout. Again, the Cougs still with a nine-point lead in Pullman. But the Utes cutting into that lead on a bucket by McFarland, taking us to the timeout right before the foul. We'll take a break now from Beasley. It's the Cougs 31 and the Utes 22. You're listening to Cougar Women's Basketball from Learfield IMG College. We'll be making their way out of the timeout here shortly, but the Cougs, after a season best 26 points in the opening quarter, led by the 12 so far today from Charlie Sledger Walker, now they have got only five points so far here in the second quarter and a one out of five in the quarter. Meanwhile, the Utes themselves just eight points so far in this second quarter. And they are three for eight. So again, a little bit of a slow start on both sides offensively in the opening five and a half minutes of quarter number two. But thanks to the strength of their opening quarter, the Cougs a nine point lead. They'll have the basketball out of the timeout. Ball comes to Tedder out at the top of the key. Tedder's got nine left to shoot as the screen comes from Motuga. Will bounce it to Motuga on the screen and roll and loses it out of bounds. So that'll give it back over to Utah for the Cougs. They will commit the turnover. And for Washington State, that's now turnover number six compared to eight turnovers so far for Utah. Four and change left here as Utah tries to close the gap before we get to intermission. Right now a nine point Washington State lead as McQueen comes to gather the ball in between the circles and get things started up. Eggs off to the left wing, now passes it over to the right hand side. Ball goes into the paint and an errant pass and a turnover. So unable to complete the pass that time as Utah as they had Poots try and 
go inside and it ends up out of bounds and the ball back over to Washington State. So again, just some tough offense on both sides here in the second quarter. Charlize Ledger Walker from the foul line has one spin off, no good. And the rebound down to Utah. McQueen comes up the sideline. Anybody going to stop her? Tedder got an angle on her. Now to go into the paint. Instead, we'll bring it back out to Poots. She doubles off her knee and is going to lose as Michaela Jones will pick it up for Washington State. So neither team able to get things going a whole lot here in the second quarter on the offensive end. Some missed shots and obviously some turnovers. And when you have those two things combined, you're not going to score a lot of points. Motuga to Crystal on the baseline. Kicks out to Charlize into the corner. Michaela Jones pumps up a three. It's off the mark, no good. An offensive rebound from Ula Motuga, but it's blocked away by Reese. Now they're going to call a foul on Washington State. And they're going to call it on Crystal Ledger Walker. So that's going to be her second. And that's going to be the third against the Cougars here in the quarter. So some early foul trouble for Washington State. Ula and Crystal each with two. Meanwhile, on the bench, McFarlane's got three for Utah. You know, looking like they are getting a substitution in. Is Ula going to make her way off? Bella back into the contest for Washington State. We're under three minutes to play. 31-22. Again, a season-best 26 points in the opening quarter for Washington State, but only five so far here in the second. Camry Martin airballs a three, and that's going to send us the other way. Cameron just kind of shaking her head. Certainly a shot that she's well capable of hitting, but did not look good on that one. The sophomore from Sandy, Utah. All right, the Cougs with it now up by nine. Can anybody get some offense going? Cougs haven't scored in five and a half minutes, and now that has changed. They got it inside, and a couple of points there for Johanna Tedder. So she puts the Cougars back on the board, and it's 33-22. to 22. Torres has the ball lost, and now we're going to have an illegal screen call? No, maybe just a push? Torres kind of looking like, what's up with that call? But it will be her first, and give the ball back over to Washington State on another Utah turnover. So a bucket from Tedder breaks the Cougar drought. The Utes haven't scored in two and a half minutes. Tedder with a three, got it! Yolanda Tedder with the last five for Washington State. She helps be a second quarter slump buster. And it's now 36 to 22. Cougs back up by 14 now. Reese around the left hand side. Maybe took an extra step, although the long strides maybe wasn't either. Maxwell puts up the three. High off the rim and over the backboard and out of bounds. And it will be Washington State basketball. Johanna Tetter with a big three, kind of shaking her left wrist, though, her left elbow, so she's okay. Meanwhile, the Cougars bring the ball across, maybe just a little bang on the funny bone is what you'd hope for, and then she's okay. I'm not exactly sure why they call it the funny bone, because when you bang it, there's nothing funny about it. All right, Bella into the paint, puts one up from 10. That one's off the mark, no good, and there for the rebound is Maxwell. 85 seconds left to go before halftime. There's a little bit of a collision out north of the court and then a ball loose that's taken away by Crystal Ledger Walker. Charlize into the lane. Foul call on the drive in, I would assume. And it should be the Cougars ball to inbound. We're gonna call the foul on McQueen. That'll be her first. Again, just the fourth of the quarter. So the next one will put the Cougars into the bonus. The Utes out of fouls to give here in the second. Well, the Cougs still have one more. Meanwhile, the inbounds pass in for the Cougars to work with with 20 now left on the shot clock. Crystal Ledger Walker finding Bella Murakatate in the paint. Steps back to put up an angle and misses the shot. And then Torres able to box out and pull down the rebound. Long down court pass to McQueen. Reese comes over for the screen. McQueen up top to Martin. Left hand side to Torres. She land off to Maxwell. Maxwell tries to go inside with it. It's deflected by Bell and off the backboard. And then Bell there to play it off the pinball carom. So the Cougs with it. 40 seconds and counting here in quarter number two. Look over to Cammy Ethers for the play call. Time running down now that you're not going to get the two for one. So just do whatever you can find here on offense if you're the Cougars. Then Utah will probably play for the final shot of the quarter. All right, Charlie Sledger Walker with it with seven left. Puts up the three. Got it! Big three from Charlie Sledger Walker. 
15 first half points for the freshman as Crystal got a hand on the inbounds pass and the Utes to bring it up court with 16 to go here in the half. Martin's got it, Cougs up by 17 now, 39 to 22. With the ball is Martin trying to find Lane. Can't, now we'll pull it back out to the top to Torres. Fires it inside to Reese. Two seconds, one second, shot will up. And that one will count for Kelsey Reese. So Reese gets the bucket to end the first half. But Washington State had five consecutive points from Johanna Tedder to slump the, you know, they were in a slump and that busted the slump. She was a slump buster, if you will. And also, the Cougs were able to get Charlize Ledger Walker into the mix of things as well. And a big three right before halftime, but Kelsey Reese got the final two points as she was able to get the two for the Utes to take us to the halftime break. At halftime in Pullman, it is now Washington State 39, Utah 24, and we'll be back after we step aside. You're listening to Cougar Women's Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Crimson numerals and the crimson numerals and lettering. Meanwhile, Utah in their pinks today as there's the three from Joanna Tedder. That's going to hit, go off the window, and then drop in. Johanna Tedder with a friendly little kiss. I thought last Sunday was Valentine's Day. Well, that's a three for her, and it's 42 to 24. And Charlize Ledger Walker thought she had Nia Becker's pocket pick, and she's got a smile on her face as she retreat the other way after Michael Price calls her for a reach in foul. So Tedder with that three, now to double digits. The second coup to double digits. Yolanda had nine first quarter points Friday, but then didn't score again. So again to double digits for the Cougs for the first time in a while. Meanwhile, driving in goes Martin, tries to get it over Bella. They're going to whistle a foul on Bella. Bella not happy about it. Meanwhile, Ula trying to call her down a little bit, and Bella's going to pick up her second personal. So a couple of free throws coming for... Kimberly Martin, she had a pretty good first half, eight points so far on the day for Martin, including a one out of two trip to the free throw line in the first half. Martin, the only Utah U to a shot in free throws today. That's her ninth point. Kimberly now up to just under 11 points per game on the season. Again, sophomore out of Sandy, Utah. It's a really young crew for Lynn Roberts and crew in Salt Lake City. Not an old crew here in Pullman, but Two of the younger teams in the conference squaring off against one another, especially as of late for Utah with Gilton no longer available for the season. Charlize Ledger Walker to the foul line, now turns the corner, goes in, tries to draw a foul herself. Instead, it's walked away, and WSU has got it. Ula Motuga kicks out to Charlize with 10 left on the shot clock. She's going to drive into the paint, puts up a shot from 12 off balance, won't go. Rebound comes down to Morton, and the Utes start the other way. 42-26, Washington State, just over a minute into the third quarter. Martin out beyond the arc, comes to the right side, will hand off to Becker. She takes the left-handed drive into the paint before getting it to the baseline. Reese working against Bella, puts up the shot. That one will dance home for Kelsey Reese. She's got four, that'll close the gap a couple, and it's 42-28, Washington State's lead at 14. Tedder to the top of the key. Gets a pass off to Charlize Ledger Walker. Now to Motuga in the corner. Torres, though, able to wrestle it away and get the steal. And now it'll be Utah's chance to try and make it a little bit of a run to start off this third quarter as they try to climb back into this one. Martin gives to Becker. Becker at the right elbow of the key, backing away to the free throw line. Now shovels it off to the top. Martin has it there. Looks to perhaps fire a three instead, will dribble it inside. Passes it back out to Maxwell, who's got it with six left to shoot. She's going to go in. Cougs were pleading for a double dribble, but didn't get one. And then the rebound will be picked up by Crystal Ledger Walker after a couple post pairs were fighting for it. Meanwhile, hitting the deck on the other end is Maxwell. Tedder putting up the three, won't go. And a rebound down to Utah this time. So, stays 42-28, Washington State. Becker to Torres, corner three. That one's too strong. Battle for the board. Tip from Shirley Sledge Walker to her sister Crystal. She brings it across the timeline, gives it to Crystal, stops and pops from 13. That one's good. Well, she's had three threes and six, six free throws. That's her first two-point bucket. And 
Charlize up to 17 now with seven minutes still to play here in the third quarter. It's 44-28 Washington State and Utah throws it away. Lynn Roberts trying to get the attention, I think, of one of her players, maybe looking at the angle over there on the sideline of that pass. But again, just a nice little silky smooth mid-range jumper from Charlize to get the Cougars back on the scoreboard here in the third quarter. Now the ball comes to Charlize Ledger Walker. Goes around the corner and into the paint. A little bit of contact that goes uncalled. Battle for the board. Charlize comes away with it. And we'll clear back out to Crystal with the fresh 20 to reset the offense. It goes to Motu at the high post. We'll fire one inside to Crystal Ledger Walker. Took him alone. Gathered. Puts it up and in over Morton. Well, Crystal out of three in the first half with that one. She's up to five. And the Cougar leads now at 18. Martin from 15, not, don't get the friendly roll. It's gonna be a rebound down to Motuga. Crystal Ledger Walker back to Ula in transition, back over to Crystal, that was deflected though, as that went off of Becker and out of bounds. So Charlize to the middle of the court for a bucket, and then the Cougars get another one with Crystal Ledger Walker on the recipient side of one, a little bit later on in this quarter. You know, Crystal trying to get it in all the way back towards the midcourt stripe to Johanna Tedder. She'll put the play in motion, almost double dribbled with it, might have gotten away with it. Had a look on her face like she brought it, but I don't know if her other hand ever got there. Crystal Ledger Walker into the lane, now will try to dump it low on the weak side to Ulu, who's got it. She'll put it up and in. Ulu Motuga now approaching double digits as well as she's up to nine, and it's 48 28. The Cougar lead now up to 20. Martin shovels it off to Torres. Torres goes down the right side of the lane and roams the baseline and then actually steps on the baseline and it will be Cougar basketball. Well, the Utes haven't scored in three minutes. Another pretty pass from the Cougars inside the Motuga on that last one. The Cougars with 16 field goals, 11 assists on their 16 made field goals so far in this one. Up by 20 with five and a half to play in the third quarter. Cougars looking to try and snap a four-game losing streak and get back in the good graces, perhaps, of the selection committee. Motuga from three, air balls it, but Charlize got the rebound, put it up, and they're going to say that was a clean block from Becker, and they're going to go back the other way. They're letting them play. They're not having a lot of whistles in this one. Martin into the paint to go up against Bella, but instead decides to circle back around and take it out to the free-throw line. Now Becker starts to penetrate in, tries to bounce it to... This time, a teammate, but that is out of bounds. Utah a little short-handed, and they look a little bit of it. Kind of hands on knees, and they look a little gassed here midway through the third quarter. Can they find some life? They're going to need to, because right now the Cougars out to a 20-point lead midway through the third quarter. It's Washington State 48, Utah 28 here in Pullman this afternoon. A Sunday afternoon, Washington State got things going in that third quarter with Johanna Tedder getting things rolling for the Cougs as the red shirt, or I should say transfer sophomore for the Cougars. Johanna Tedder up to 11 points. Again, had nine in the opening quarter on Friday and then didn't score again. Johanna to double digits for the first time in a while for Washington State. You have to go back for Yo. Uh, she picked up 12 against Stanford back on the 27th of January, last double-digit game before this one. Now Utah doing what the Cougars did to end the third quarter to start the fourth quarter. They go high-low and get it inside the McFarland for an easy two, and Utah starts the fourth quarter with a bucket, and it's back to a 14-point game. Bell at the high post, finds Tedder, into the corner, Charlie's Ledger Walker, triple from the corner, off the mark. Bella got the rebound, gonna power it up, but McFarland there for the block. And McFarland then scoops it up for Utah. Pretty good defensive play that time for the freshman out of Boise. Now Utah to bring it back across the timeline, trailing by 14. Is there enough efficiency and enough gas in the tank for Utah to make a run? And can the Cougars have a kind of killer instinct to close this one down? Into McFarland one more time. Her shot's going to be short this time. And after bodies bang, it's Charlize Ledger Walker who has it. And they're going to whistle a jump ball and it's going to be out of bounds to Washington State. So alternating possession as McFarland said no on the Don Isle and then ultimately it was a jump ball. And here comes to the top of the key to Shear Levy over to Tedder left wing. 
Skips one to Crystal Ledger Walker, who starts to drive in. Roaming the baseline is Charlize. Now the ball loose on the other side. It's out of bounds. Last, touch, last touching Crystal Ledger Walker. Coons have done a better job today of taking care of the basketball. That'll be their eighth turnover compared to 16 so far for the Utah Utes. Meanwhile, Utah trying to bring it in on the sideline and gets it into Martin. Martin approaching the midcourt stripe with Tedder on her as the Cougars are matched up on defense. Down to 8.35 and counting left to play in this one from Beasley as Martin has it at the top of the key with 15 left to shoot and the ball off the foot of Crystal Ledger Walker. Well, they reset it to 20 and they're going to. They're going to say that was an intentional kick. Meanwhile, Michaela Jones comes back in. Sheer Levy will head to the sidelines for Washington State. And Utah, with the 20 to work with, will bring it in. Martin to the right side to McQueen. Looking inside, settles for a pass out top to Martin. Martin driving into the paint, circles around, gets the pass back to McQueen, now back to Martin for a three, and it's blocked out of bounds by Bella Maracatete. So Bella picking up the big block shot, and there's only one left to shoot here for Utah on the shot clock. So good block that time. We're going to have a timeout. We are going to have a timeout. Glenn Roberts is going to try and set something up with one second left on the shot clock, so it will become a media break as well. Big block shot from Bella. Now can Utah do something with only one tick on the shot clock? We'll find out when we return to Pullman, but the block shot taking us to a break. 52-38 Washington State with 8-10 to play in Pullman. Block shot by Bella. Wasn't sure if maybe they'd go and maybe see if there was more than a second left on the shot clock, but there is just one tick left on that shot clock here. And the Utes inbound on the play for the Cougars. Certainly don't want to foul here. Make them try and receive a pass and put it up and in. Here comes the pass from Martin looking into the paint, nothing there. We'll now get it to McFarland who puts it up and that one misses everything so it will be a shot clock violation. Ball is in the air when the shot clock expired so they'll whistle it dead after the horn and with the inbounds pass here for Washington State that'll go down as a turnover for the Utes. That'll be their 17th. All right, eight minutes to play in Pullman, and the Cougars nursing a 14-point lead here. Tedder going to fire up the three. That one's going to be short. There's a Morton rebound for Utah, looking all the way up court. Got it ahead to McQueen. Tedder there defensively, but McQueen slipped around her and put it up and in. So a quick two for Utah to bring them to within 12. Cougs had a pretty good lead in Salt Lake City, and Utah whittled it away in the fourth quarter. Cougs still came away with the win. As the pass inside from Charlize to Bella's up and in. So Bella's now got eight. That's a 14-point lead for the Cougars. That game all the way back in January is tripping and losing her balance over on the far side as Morton, so a travel will be whistled. They get a nice find from Charlize Ledger-Walker to Bella on the last two for Washington State. That is now a total of 13 assists on 19 made baskets for the Cougars. But back on the first, the Cougars had a pretty good size lead and still held on for a 79-74 victory. Bella going to work inside, being more aggressive today, and that is two more for her, and she's into double digits. So the third Cougar to double digits, Tedder, Bella, and of course the 17 from your leading scorer, Charlize Ledger-Walker, and the Cougars expand their lead out to 16 after Utah had cut it to 12. Pass inside to Reese, puts up the shot, getting a piece of it, Bella, then hits the deck, and we're going to have a foul called against the Utes on the rebound. Lynn Roberts, hands in hand, saying wasn't a foul until she lost her balance. We get a good look at it. And I think she had a pretty good hold of her arm. I, and I'm just, uh, I get holding your whistle sometimes, and other times when there's a foul there, you just got to call it. And now it'll be Cougar basketball. And it'll be Michaela Jones out top. Giving it now to Crystal Ledger Walker and then handing off to Tedder. Tedder to the top to Michaela Jones who fires up a three. It's short. Bella down with an offensive rebound. Spence tries to put it up and she'll go to the free throw line. Well, she's been playing pretty much in foul trouble all day long and still put together a pretty good effort, Peyton McFarland, the freshman, with eight points and doing some good work inside, but that will now be her fourth. 
And Bella heads back to the free throw line again. Bella had a rough one Friday night against Colorado. And bouncing back today with a double-digit performance. Her free throw this time is up and good. But scored only one against Colorado. And over the weekend, last weekend against the Arizona schools, had just three against the Wildcats and nothing against the Sun Devils. It's so good to see her being more aggressive and finding ways to get to the basket and scoring. And she's up to 12 now today. Bella's not only a wild child, but might be a wild card on this team heading into the final couple of weeks of action before the selection committee makes their selections. All right, with the ball is Reese. We'll hand off right side to Martin. Martin's got it working against Crystal Ledger Walker. Now McFarlane out high. They'll let her shoot from out there. Maxwell's got it, got between players, puts one up and over Bella, but missed it short. Battle for the rebound, and Bella rips it away on the floor, and that'll bring it back over to Washington State. Charlize in transition, into the lane, all the way to the basket, draws a foul, and will head to the line. So again, not 100% sure what the discussion was downstairs, but we will find out, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps not. Either way, we continue on. Second free throw, no good. So a rare couple of misses at the foul line from Charlize, but then an offensive rebound from Emma Nankurvis, and the Cougars can reset. 5.40 and counting now from Pullman. Cougs by 18, 58-40. Tatter to Charlize, three ball in the corner. Why settle for a couple of free throws and he can splash in a three. So Charlize Ledger Walker with the triple in the corner. It's 61 to 40. Now the Cougars have their biggest lead after the Utes had trimmed it to 12. It's now out to 21. Cougars went on a 14 nothing run in the first half. Now on a 9 nothing run here. That's going to come to a close and a layup by Kelsey Reese inside. But that will close the gap to 61 42. Pass goes to the right side to Tedder. Now up top to Charlize Ledger Walker. Tedder back to Charlize. We're across the midway point of the fourth quarter. So next whistle will bring us to our final media timeout of this game. Michaela Jones pumps up a three. Got it. Michaela Jones with the three. She is the fifth Cougar to hit a three. And not only that, it's the tenth three of the game for Washington State. 64 to 42 now the Cougs on top. Now the pass goes into the corner to Maxwell. Back out it comes and over to the left-hand side to Martin. Martin looking at Reese inside instead brings it to McQueen. Now to McFarlane and a foul on the post up going to be whistled against Emma Nan Curvis. And that'll bring us to the aforementioned media break. So we'll break away one more time and then come back to wrap it up for you from Beasley. 4.22 left to play in the contest. Couple of big threes. How about Charlize Ledger Walker from the corner? Michaela Jones also was able to get one from the corner. Reese with a layup in there as well to end the long drought with a three from Michaela Jones has given the Cougars a 22 point lead at Beasley. Charlize Ledger Walker continues to lead the way for the Cougars. Another 20 point output for her as she has done that so often this season, more than any other freshman in school history. And it will be Utah to receive the inbounds pass as we get back going again here from Beasley. A little bit of news on what went on downstairs during our discussion during the last little bit of play as Reese gets the ball into the paint and puts it up and in off the backboard and she's got her seventh and eighth points and she is now up to eight in the contest and it's a 20 point Cougar lead with four minutes to play. Charlize to Grace Sorber. Now we'll bring it back out high to Crystal Ledger Walker. Near side to Michaela Jones, then up top it goes to Crystal Ledger Walker. Hits a cutting Grace Sorber, but she's in too much traffic, so tries to pass out, but there to take it away is McQueen. Not a whole lot in numbers, but Kennedy will push, stop, pop, miss. McFarlane there with the rebound, can't get the put back to go. Gets her own rebound again, and this time a foul called, and a chance at a three-point play for Peyton McFarlane. They'll call the foul on Grace Sarver, so she will pick up her first, and it's going to send McFarland to the free throw line. Apparently, it was with the official foul count. My guess that it would be on this young lady at the line, Peyton McFarland. Free throws up, and that one hits the back of the room and falls in. That was a made basket, right? Nobody was doing anything on that, and they made the free throw, so I don't know what's going on with the lack of communication downstairs, but... 
That free throw, and now into the game for Washington State will come the freshman from North Vancouver, Canada, Jessica Clark. But I think the discussion was whether or not Peyton had four fouls or not. And I still got it listed as four, and as far as I can tell, all the stats say that it's got four. You know, this foul will be missed with, will be whistled, excuse me, on McQueen, and that'll be her second. All right, Cougs with it up by 17 with 3.20 to play as Clark at the high post finds a cutting Charlize Ledger Walker for the reverse layup and then a little point of the finger from Charlize to Jessica, her teammate, as that was a nice little look and on the reverse. And then a thank you from Charlize to her freshman teammate. And Charlize now up to 22 points. All right, three minutes and counting left to play and it's the Cougs now by 19, 66 to 47. This is Martin getting the screen for McFarlane. Puts up the three. It's off the rim. No good. McFarlane going hard after the rebound. And we're going to have a foul called on the Cougs. They are. Cammie thought maybe Peyton McFarlane on the back of Charlize, but instead they're going to call it on Charlize on the rebound. So that'll be her second. Charlize Ledger-Walker with 22 points, six rebounds. By the way, her sister, Crystal Ledger-Walker, a three away from a double-double because she's got 10 assists on the day. Meanwhile, the ball deflected, still loose. McFarlane's got it, and a foul going to be whistled on Sarver. No, they're going to go the other way and call it on Clark. So Clark will pick up her first. And that will send McFarlane to the foul line to shoot two. 66-47 here. Is Selena Molina getting set to check in. So she makes her way into the contest with the Cougars. And I think that the Cougs are going to have some moments for their bench here as the free throw up. And that one dances out this time for Peyton. And she's had a good day today with 11 points for Utah. Again, Utes without Drew Gilton. Unfortunately out for the remainder of the season with an injury. Wish her the best in her rehab process. As again... She is an important junior for this team. Two and a half left to play. Pass inside to Jessica Clark. From, that one's going to be missed. And the rebound comes down to Utah. Utah back up. And now there's a shot put away. And it's going to be a foul whistled. And that's on Charlize Ledger-Walker. So Ledger-Walker will pick up her third. Getting a report from downstairs that maybe the... Foul count was off and it got corrected. Maybe that was team fouls in the quarter, but all that seems to be just some detail work in this one. Meanwhile, Martin misses the free throw. So Martin now so far at the line, just three out of five. It does hit that one. So make it now four out of six from the line. She's up to 11 and the Cougar leads at 17 with 2.15 and counting left to play fourth quarter. Jones to Crystal Ledger-Walker. Now to Selena Molina into the corner. Charlize Ledger-Walker for three. It's off the mark. No good. And the rebound down to Utah. Utah across the timeline with two minutes to play in a 17-point game. Martin inside to McFarlane. Working against Clark. Shot won't go. Rebound, though, down to Reese on the weak side. And she'll put it up and in. That's a 6'4 freshman and a 6'5 freshman. You can tell there are youth out there, but I think you can see some potential then. In the coming years, there might be a couple of post players for Lynn Roberts to work with. Michaela Jones going to pump up a three. That's going to miss short. And the rebound down to Utah. Cougars pushed out the lead to as many as 22. It's now down to 15. Martin with a runner. No good. And a foul call. It does not look like Utah has the time to make the full comeback, but Cammie Etheridge can't be happy with the way her crew is finishing things off here. Foul is called on Selena Molina, her first, and now Sheer Levy going to check in. She'll come in for Charlize Ledger-Walker, so she'll head to the bench. And again, 22 from Charlize Ledger-Walker, and she receives a hand from the limited fans in attendance here at Beasley. Again, we've got the cardboard cutouts all season, but this weekend had a chance to finally let a few folks through the doors as well. So limited fans on hand here at Beasley today. Meanwhile, a couple of free throws for Martin, and it's now a 66-53 contest. 
Right side, Jones with it. Now top to Crystal Ledger Walker. Now Selena Molina with it as we approach a minute to play. Selena passes off to Jones. Now to Crystal Ledger Walker. Crystal finds a wide open Selena Molina who gets the points. Selena Molina with two, and that gets the Cougar bench riled up. And how about Crystal Ledger Walker, her 11th assist of the bowl game? 68 53, Washington State by 15 as we're down on the final 45 seconds. McQueen cross courts it over to Maxwell. Maxwell puts one up from the corner, that one's short. Jessica Clark down at the rebound, and we've got something. Well, we've got blood on Michaela Jones dripping down from her knee and on her left leg, so she'll have to make her way over. Michaela's kind of smiling about it, so she's okay, but we're going to have to get that cleaned up, and as a matter of fact, Grace Sarver is going to come in for so we're down to the final 35 seconds now about 7-8 seconds between shot clock and the final horn in this one so the Cougs can play for one more shot here again 15 point lead Crystal Ledger Walker finds Selena Molina on the baseline and she ends up stepping on the baseline so that'll give it back over to Utah so the shot clock operators day is done as we're down to the final 20 seconds Utah, I'm sure, will try and get some more here as Maxwell drives in. McFarland puts it up. Another foul called. and Another two points for Peyton McFarland working on a good day. So Peyton will have two more to her total. She's now got 14. As again, she's had a solid day today for Utah. McFarland with a career high 14 today. Misses that free throw. Clark down to three rebound on the Cougs. We'll dribble out the final 10 seconds. Well, four game losing streak over for Washington State. They knock off Utah this afternoon, 68-55. And as they look for a postseason bid, this one a big one on the win column as the Cougars back to 500 overall and now eight and 10 in the conference. Charlize Ledger Walker, 22 points. Bella Murakatate, Ioana Tedder with 12 and 11. And how about 11 assists dealt out by their point guard, Crystal Ledger Walker, with seven points and 11 assists. The Cougars waving at the limited fans that have made their way into Beasley Coliseum on this Sunday. Smiles on the face. And Cami Etheridge and crew can celebrate a victory here in Pullman this afternoon. Again, your final, Washington State 68, Utah 55. And we'll be back with the post-game show. It's next. This is Cougar Women's Basketball from Learfield IMG College.